Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Alana and I am an acrylic artist. Thanks for stopping by my studio today. Well today we're going to be painting another pillow but we're not going to be using fabric paint or acrylic paint. We're going to be using multi-surface paints. It is just a fabulous outdoor paint to paint, um, to use on any surface. I absolutely loved using it on this fabric. So um, this is a 16 by 16 pillow. And um, I tell you, it just, it just went on so nicely on here. I just loved painting it on fabric. So if you've got some outdoor pillows that you're just dying to paint something on, you wanna grab some multi-surface paint because it's water resistant and um, it will do beautifully on fabric. Just amazing. I loved using it. Um, it is a deco art product, which is what I normally use. Um, this is a 16 by 16 inch pillow and you can purchase the pillow covers on my website, lanalam.com. And the 100% of the proceeds from the sales of my pillow covers benefit a charity every year. And this year uh, for 2021, I am doing the American Diabetes Association. So uh, I hope that you will head over to lanalam.com and pick up a pillow cover over there and uh, help support a great organization. But for now, let's grab our paints, our brushes and supplies, and let's get painting this amazing pillow cover. Okay, let's start this project. So I have my pillow cover, which is a polyester pillow cover, um, one that I can put outside. I want this to be a more of an outdoors pillow, although I will bring it in when the weather's damp. Um, just because of the fiber fill, the insert that I go in it <clears throat> may not necessarily be, you know, one that can set out in the weather. But uh, I did want some um, pillows for my patio chairs. So um, you can just use a regular pillow cover, whatever uh, that you have, another piece of fabric. You can paint this onto a wood surface, you know, a canvas, whatever you would like. So I've got my line drawing laid on here about where I want it. I want to make sure I leave plenty of room up here because I made a stencil to go up here that says sea sand and sunshine. And I'm going to do a couple of these pillows. Now to get my big circle right here, I have this plastic bowl, which is about six inches across. And I'm going to lay it down here as I transfer on my line drawing, kind of line it up. I want a stylus that is pretty narrow on the tip. It doesn't have a very big uh, nib on the end of it. So that I can get this line right next to this bowl. And I don't really want to go through my other stuff, but I think I did. Okay, so let's see if that transferred okay. Could be a little bit darker. Put it back on here. This line up here did not get very dark. Let's see if that helped. Okay. And then for my center circle, <clears throat> you can find another item that is about this size, but I use this circle uh, template that you can purchase just about anywhere. And this size of a circle is one inch. This is for my center circle here. And I printed my line drawing onto vellum because when you're transferring onto fabric, you need something that is a little bit more substantial when you're uh, doing your line drawings that won't go through the, uh, the paper. And transfer paper is pretty soft and so it won't hold up as well when you're transferring. You can just lay the pattern printed with paper right on here, and the paper's a little bit thicker. But I like to be able to see through mine to know, you know, how I'm doing with my lines. Now, your lines don't have to be crazy dark. That's really dark. But um, I am going to be outlining that with some black, so... And we'll just 
continue all the way. Make sure that where you're doing your lines that you have your graphite paper underneath. I have gray graphite. So I can look under here and see what lines I've done and what lines I haven't. I'm going to go ahead and transfer these lines because we're going to have some sections in here that will be painted. And I will continue all the way around transferring all of my lines on. Um, on this particular one, there's no lines that you need to leave off. Uh, we'll need every line that's on here. Okay, so I used the gray graphite paper. My line drawing looks pretty good. I can see all of my lines. All I did was tape it down with some blue painter's tape. So we can remove that now. We shouldn't need the line drawing. <clears throat> and all right, I just want to make sure all my lines are on here good. So I've got two pieces of cardboard under here. And I'm going to want to move them back and forth as I paint different areas. So for now, I'm going to work on my life preserver here so I want to keep my fabric tight now you can take some blue painters tape and tape that down I'm gonna move it back I'm gonna open it back up and move the cardboard over and and fold this side down when I'm done with this side but I'm just gonna use some binder clips and hold this in place <clears throat> while I work on this area right here so the paints I'm going to be using today <clears throat> are going to be multi-surface paints. Uh, normally I use fabric paints. I'm actually going to be using a combination of the two because I'm missing a couple of colors that I want to use in the multi-surface paints. So I'm going to have fabric paint on hand for those couple of colors. But for the most part we're going to be using this particular paint right here. And it will paint on just about any surface that you want. It's a great paint. I've painted on fabric with it before. It's got just this buttery feel when it paints onto fabric. I love it. You can still use your <clears throat> fabric painting medium and apply this down in your areas first and then apply your paint. Um, so I think I will uh, add the fabric medium first and then we will start painting on this project. All right, let me zoom in to our painting here. And I like to use um, older brushes on my, um, when I'm painting fabric, because some fabrics can be a little rough on your brushes, but they still need to be decent brushes. You don't want them all splayed out and, and um, you know, frayed on the, the bristles and everything. So I'm going to apply a coat of medium on here. And the areas that I want to put my paint in. And because I'm using multi-surface paints, I do not necessarily need this step at all. But if you're painting with fabric paints um, or you're, you're mixing some fabric medium with your Americana or acrylic paints, you'll want to do this step. So I thought I would continue to have it in the video just so you, you know, know and remember that this is part of the process when painting on fabric that helps make the paint go on so much smoother. So these areas will remain white, so they won't be painted in at all because I have a white pillow cover here, but if your pillow cover is a different color, then you'll definitely want to um, paint it in with a white. Alright, so <clears throat> I want my colors on this to be fun and bold and bright. So I've got this color called Lipstick. I've also got this one that is dark scarlet, but I think I'm going to go with the lipstick one. And I'm going to 
put that on my palette here. Try and get my palette in the shot for you. And I'm going to start painting in the red areas of my fabric. Now you want to make sure that you have washed your fabric, dried it, and ironed it. No fabric softeners. That just helps remove the sizing from the fabric and helps the paint adhere well to it. So if you ever have to wash it, you don't have to worry about the paint coming off or flaking or peeling or anything. And some pillow covers are a booger to iron after they've been washed and dried. I know this one was just had so many wrinkles in it. I didn't think I was ever going to get the wrinkles out of it. So just keep going. I do sell pillow covers on my website, lanalam.com, and all the proceeds go to benefit for the year 2021 will benefit um, the American Diabetes Association. So if you're in need of a pillow cover, I don't have any that are 100% polyester or um, most of mine are a cotton blend. You want an uh, outdoor fabric or a polyester fabric for um, putting your pillows outside. That will help resist um, moisture and mildew and it just protects everything a little bit better. So just continue on around. I wasn't sure how I was going to paint this or draw this. At first I had drawn like a rope coming off of it like you know the rope that, that would be attached to the boat if they were throwing it out to you but I already had a rope around the um, anchor so I just googled what they look like and almost every one of them had these other ropes that came off of the sides of them like this so I decided that would be a good fit for my project mm, looking good already I love this multi-surface paint it just is so creamy it just goes on beautifully on fabric. And my, the other fabric that I painted on with this was more like a canvas type fabric. And it did just amazing on it. So, you know, if you're having a hard time finding the fabric paints or getting a hold of colors that you need and you come across some multi-surface paints from DecoArt then go ahead and grab those paints because they work great. I need my line out here. Let's see where I need to paint to. So this little um buoy life preserver thing will not take very long to paint. Um, I'm going to put two coats of red on just because I prefer having nice paint, paint on here. Now when you're turning your fabric, make sure that you don't have any paint on your hands anywhere to get it transferred and I recommend keeping your water basin where you're rinsing your brushes away from your uh, pillow cover as well because I was painting one the other day and rinsed out my brush and splashed that dirty water all over my pillow cover. Of course the water had paint in it so then I had a dirty paint spot on my pillow cover. And just take your time. There's no rush on this. 
so I'm going to go off camera and get this dry and get a second coat on it so we can move on. I'm not going to add any details, any shading and highlighting onto this till after we get all of our base coats on. I want to get base coats on everything first. Okay, so there is the beginning of our little life preserver. And it's looking good. So I'm going to get this dry and the second coat on, and we're going to move over to the next element, which will be our anchor here, and paint it in. Oops, see there, I just splashed water. I'm so messy washing out my brushes. I mean, crazy. So I might want to move my water basin somewhere else so I'm not splattering all over my painting here. Okay. All right. Nice clean table. No splattering. <laughs> we're good. Okay, I'll be get it dry, get the second coat on, or we're going to move to the next element. Okay, before I get this dry, there is one really important tip that I forgot to tell you in case you have never painted on a pillow cover or fabric is that you need cardboard inside or some kind of surface inside that's covered with plastic wrap, glad press and seal, uh, plastic bag, aluminum foil, freezer paper, something that will protect the other side of the pillow cover um, and uh, this keeps the the paint just right here where you need it because otherwise it goes all the way through to your bottom layer and the plastic or whatever you put over the cardboard will keep the fabric from sticking to the cardboard. So a very important, extremely important tip is to do that. I generally try to find a couple of pieces that are the size of the area I want to paint. Uh, it just so happens on this one I had a couple of pieces that fit the whole height of this pillow cover. Um, normally I don't do that because I like to fold the parts back that I'm not using to keep from getting paint on them and to keep the fabric pulled tight so that as I'm painting it doesn't move or bunch up underneath my brush. So freezer paper, plastic wrap, aluminum foil, glad press and seal, or a plastic bag. Any of those will work to cover your cardboard area to put inside of your or underneath your fabric if you're just doing like a towel or something else you would still want something underneath the fabric to keep the paint from going through okay that's extremely important tip and I forgot to mention it at the beginning so if you're painting on fabric for the first time be sure and do that before you start painting okay this is pretty dry and it's going to feel different than fabric paint mostly because the multi-purpose uh, paints, um, multi-surface paints, have a sealer already in them. So it's got this smooth, almost plasticky feel on here so that you know that's going to repel water. So I didn't fold this over because I wanted to make sure that was completely dry and I didn't want to cause a crease in it. So I pulled up to the top and slid it over the cardboard and clamped it down and over on this edge. I want to keep my fabric nice and flat. And we're going to work on the other elements now, getting the base coats on them. I'm going to paint this in without the fabric medium so that you can see the difference in how the paint goes on. And I'm going to use um, Blue Lagoon. And I'm going to grab a smaller flat brush that I can get into these areas with. bright blue here and we'll just go straight into our paint and you can paint your anchor in any color that you want 
these this particular blue goes well with my decor so I wanted to incorporate it into this design but you can certainly use a gray or you know whatever color you would like so you can see how nicely it paints onto the fabric even without the fabric medium so the fabric medium is optional I've got a little space of red right there I need to paint. I'm going to flip this. Always check your hands. Make sure you don't have any paint on your hands when you're moving your fabric. Now I have plans when this is done to outline all of this with a, a permanent waterproof marker. Let me paint that little spot of red in before I forget it. And kind of straighten my blue up there. to go along the a line that creates the edge that kind of helps me see it a little bit more visually and keeps me from um, going out past it when I'm filling in with this paint and you know generally with this paint this multi-surface paint on fabric a lot of times you could probably get by with just one coat on here because it just really has beautiful, beautiful coverage. Just about went out past my line here, so let me draw it. And draw this one. Turn your project as you need to. see the fabric pretty well. You'd probably like to be on camera, wouldn't you? Okay, I think my line is here. Didn't draw that one in very dark. Okay. Just keep turning it. that line I drew a little bit because I felt like this corner over here needed to be a little bit longer to match the other side more. Okay. Where is my line drawing because I feel like See that one drops down lower, so I might adjust that just a little bit. Okay, it's still pretty low, so. hand in it so you have to be careful doing that as well. You'll transfer your paint somewhere else on your design. I don't know how many times I've done that as well. Alright, so I'm just going to keep going filling in with this blue. Oop, I don't want puckering like that, that's for sure. Everything needs to be flat. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to go off camera and finish painting in my anchor because it's all just, you know, repetitive stuff. Just going inside your lines. And filling it all in with your base color. I'm going to go ahead and paint my starfish in and my rope while I'm off camera because this is all just base coating and this stuff can get pretty repetitive when you're watching it on a video. So I'm going to paint my starfish in with um, a mix of muted gold and where's my buttermilk? We might use Vanilla Shake. I just want to lighten that gold up. I don't want it to be so dark. I can use this as a shading color, but I don't want to use it as a base coat color. So I'm going to mix these two to get a really soft yellow color, golden color for my um, starfish. And I'm going to use brown sugar for my rope. So I'm going to go off camera and finish all of my base coats, and when we come back, we're going to start adding all the detail to this. Okay, all my layers are dry. Two coats on everything. Now your second coat doesn't have to be a full heavy coat. You just really need to look at it and see where you can still slightly see some of the fabric uh, color coming through and those are the places you really want to concentrate on putting a, a thin layer on top of it um, but don't feel like you have to completely cover the entire area that you painted unless you've got a lot of the background fabric coming through all right we're going to do a little bit of shading on our red here and i've got um, dark scarlet for my multi-surface paint and some black um, which is black tie and i am going to uh, just mix a tiny little bit of black in there to just darken that a little bit. Maybe not quite that dark. I'm just going to wipe off on a paper towel and reload some more red here. So see, I just want it to be a little bit darker than what it came out of the bottle. And we are going to float. You can have a little bit of water in your brush for this to help the paint um, just go on smoothly, but you don't want a ton of water in your brush. We don't want to break down the, the paint here. So I'm going to apply this out here on, make sure I stay out of my paint over here. And I definitely want that to be wider, so I'm gonna grab some more paint and just bring it up a little bit into that. We're just going to start creating a little bit of dark edges. Give it a, This will start giving it its roundness here. Grab a little more paint. And we're going to do that to all the red sections. Super easy. Too much black paint mixed in there, so I'll take some of it. All I do is wipe my brush and then load more of my red in there. And you know, you still don't have to be super concerned unless you're not planning on outlining with the black marker. At this time, that's that's my goal. But as I paint this, you know, that's how things evolve, and I may change my mind completely and just outline this rope thing right here. So I want to get a lot more paint on my brush for this. It's a much bigger area. a little bit more here. Painting on top of this multi-surface paint is just a dream. It just, the layers go on just beautifully. All right, 
Now I've got it tight up here, but not really tight over here. So I want to keep make sure I keep pulling this to make sure that my fabric is laying flat. I don't want any bunchy fabric anywhere because it's going to um, cause me issues. And I'm just about to get into my paint palette here. Let me move some of this stuff over. it into the camera shot when I need to but yeah that was getting dangerously close there and go up to the rope we're gonna go around the rope as well but I'm gonna concentrate on getting this edge here first and I want more paint so I'm gonna grab more paint and we're just floating like we normally would on any project. Probably like to be in the camera shots. What happens when I zoom in? I get you out of shot. All right, turn it because I want to do this other edge. A little bit too much black, so wipe off. Grab some more red. I mean, it's easy to get too much black, so. Don't think you have to go wash your brush, because you don't. You just got to wipe the paint off that's on your brush onto a paper towel, and then just go load the, the color that you want more of. In my case, it was more of the red, not so much the black. So I'm going to go around this rope here, create a little bit of a shadow around it. Make sure you don't get into your your fabric anywhere. And so use a brush that works well in the area or that you can control well by lifting it up so that you know if you're out close to this edge you're not laying color down where you don't want it. Okay, looking good. Let's do this other red one. And occasionally, I'm picking up a little tiny drop of water just on this edge over here. Keeps my br brush from catching as I'm painting. I'm turn it this way. Paint this edge first. And here. Just work your way around it. Oh, I'm tilting my brush up as I come down this because see how wide my brush is? And I don't want that edge, even though it's the water edge, going out there because it could have just a tint of paint in it. And then I would have that, that paint in my uh, fabric where I don't want it and I would have to go in and paint those areas in with white and you know if the fabric's already white I don't want to have to come back in and paint with white again. I need more paint. A little drop of water on that water edge if you need it all the way up to our blue. Grab a little bit more make this a little wider. That's looking really good. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush off. Now I want to um, take some of my blue, just very, very lightly of the blue. So I'm definitely going to have my uh, brush with some water in it. My blue is starting to dry out here. Just a tiny little bit. I want to just work a tiny little bit of that in. Make sure it doesn't get too crazy far over your um, over on your bristles. This is going to be the scary part. We want to put a little bit along these edges that we didn't paint. That's going to give a little bit of a shadow in here. This is very very thin. 
paint. I have a lot of water on my brush and not hardly any paint. And you won't be able to do this without the water, so make sure that you've got the water in your brush. I need a little more water. And we're just going to put an edge there, and all this that's kind of dark, that will dry. That's just the water part. We should be left with just a very light blue and we're going to go on both sides of this and make sure when you're getting water on your brush you're going into the clean water edge or the clean water you're not um, getting water from an area that's got paint already in it This is where you could put some fabric medium down and that would help it glide a little bit more on there. Ooh, too much paint there. Alright, let's see if I can get in this area here. going to go along all the outside edges. More water. I still had a little bit of paint on my brush, but it wasn't laying in there like I wanted it to. And this is, you know, one of the things that you can skip if you feel like you're not quite ready to attempt this part. I'm just going to continue all the way around this, both edges. And because there's no fabric medium or no paint laying in this area already, it's really gripping my brush and pulling that water out of it very quickly. But you can see here this is already getting pretty dry. Go here. I'm going to add a teeny tiny little bit of black to that get just a slightly darker and do some shading around our rope here. And a little bit around this thing here. Just create a little bit of a shadow there. Okay. Okay, so it's already dry. You can see all those dark kind of grayish areas or brown tinted areas that were on there was just the water. So it's dry and we don't have that on here anymore. So we're just going to create a quick little highlight on here. And I'm going to take my white paint with a round brush and we're just going to go through the middle and create some highlights with just some white and a round brush and maybe just a little bit through here Those two don't line up, so I'm going to remove this one real quick before it gets completely dry. Maybe. Maybe 
maybe not. And I'm going to adjust so that they line up a little bit better. There we go. That looks much better. Maybe not quite so fat right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm not going to worry about the rope out here till later because I'm really not 100% sure what I want to do with that rope. Um, I'm thinking about just outlining it in black, but now I am reconsidering the black, so I don't know. Tough call on that one. Let's work on our anchor. So for our anchor, Okay, so I have decided to go ahead and finish this rope out around it. Let me wide angle out. So I'm going to use an Identa pen um, because these are um, a permanent pen and uh, should not be affected by water. So I'm going to outline my uh, rope area here. And this is a dual tipped pen. It's got a really fat nib here and a narrow one here. And I'm just using the narrow one to outline and then I can come in and do some shading on this rope and we'll add some little detail lines in here this one feels like it's kind of running out of paint let's see if I've got one that's got a little bit more paint in it kind of feel like they're running out of paint. I use this end more than I use the fat end so it probably will run out of paint quicker. So I'm just going right over my graphite lines that I created here. trying to stay on them the best that I can. Because I won't be painting this in. I'm going to be doing some shadow stuff on it. But I'm not going to be painting it in. And this is where you really want your fabric to be tight. So if you don't have it taped or clipped back, be sure you're pulling on your fabric so that it stays flat and doesn't bunch up underneath you. Okay, I'm just going to leave it a, a white rope thing there, a right cording thing. Um, I am going to add a little bit of shading on here with that blue like we did here. So I'm going to try this and I may come back in and add rope sections like this, but I'm really thinking that I want to leave it mostly white and we'll just do a little bit of shadow stuff where it meets everything. This is that same blue that we used on the um, buoy itself. So for now, I'm just going to do this, do it this way. And like I said, as I paint the design more, I might want to come back and add a little bit more detail onto this rope, which can be added very easily. I'm just going to shade around everything here. That'll be mostly shaded in right there. Where one thing lays over another, that's where you want to put your, your shadows. Okay, and then I'm going to go a 
along the inside edge of this with just a scooting type oh, brushing. I'm just, I've just got it side loaded like I did with everything else. I'm just kind of, you know, hit and miss putting that paint down along the inside edge. both. This, this will be the shadow edge on this. And this is optional right here because leaving it just all white will be just fine as well. Okay, so we're done with the buoy. Um, it didn't take very long at all to do. It looks great. I love it. Okay, buoy is all done. Um, adjust your fabric and your clips. I'm, I have two pieces of cardboard in here, so I had one, the back one, slide all the way over this way, and the top one is slid all the way over, well, not quite all the way over, but over that direction. So I've got a nice firm area behind this with no... Uh, edge here, no lip where the two cardboards meet. You want to make sure that that is not under this while you're painting. It shouldn't be under any area while you're painting. Okay, we're going to shade on our um, buoy, I mean our anchor, and I've got a color I'm going to try here. Um, it's night sky in the multi-purpose paints, and I'm going to see if it's going to be a dark enough color for this blue. Might have to add a tiny bit of black to it, but right now it's looking like it's going to be adequate for this. So we're going to. Um, I'm not really sure if this is supposed to be shaded here or not, or if that's if that goes on top, if it goes behind. I don't know. If you, if you know about anchors, then you paint it the way that you would like to see it. But we're going to um, go all the way around. I'm sorry, I'm constantly moving this. When I have a larger surface, I really have to move it a lot to get it um, to where I can pull the paint towards me because that just works so much better. just a little bit. Go along the bottom edge here on this. Start giving that rounded look there. This multi-surface paint on fabric, man, I, I am just absolutely loving it. I wish I'd have tried it before. Just is amazing. I'm going to go along the bottom edge. So I've got my brush tilted up here because I don't want it laying down into the uh, the fabric itself. So always adjust your brush. Working with a larger brush is, is going to teach you um, a little bit better brush control to know where your brush is. Um, smaller brushes make you work so hard. So if you just learn to use a larger brush and learn how to manipulate that brush, um, painting will become a little bit easier. We're going to go along both bottom edges down here. Or both, I mean the whole bottom edge, not both. <laughs> like, wow, what kind of anchor are you painting? I got out of line a little bit there, but I can't go back and clean it up because I'll create a, a nasty mess there. So make sure you stay within your painted areas. Okay, I'm going to put some shadow here.
We want this to look dimensional, not flat. So shading uh, is important for adding the dimension. And I've just been using a half inch flat for most all of this. I did go to a smaller brush for some of the smaller areas, a smaller flat, but you can use a round brush, whatever brush. I always say whatever brush that is your favorite brushes to use, those are the ones you should use. All right, I want to go up here and create some roundness on this like we did on the buoy. So a little bit of shading here. And it doesn't have to be as wide as your other shading there. And to me on the camera it looks really dark, but it's really a very slight value change here. It's not um, it's not a great big value change. So, but it does look pretty dark on my camera shot. Could of course it could be the coloring on my screen. edge, this top edge here, and I do want to go down these edges a little bit, and we got to go down the rope, or around the rope here, whoops, see, I got out into my background fabric, I'm going to wipe my brush off because my paint might be a little bit far over, and reload, When you're painting on wood or something, you can clean up those areas when you get into the background. But on fabric, you can't, so you have to really be careful where your paint is going. picking up water on that water edge so I can help this paint move. I don't want it to um, just drag for me. Go around that star there again. A little bit more of a shadow. And any places that you want to apply a second coat to darken, you can do that. Because generally with shading, you do need two uh, layers. But, okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more in here. And on the rounded part. And around this rope right here. A little bit more paint on my brush. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so that's our shading on there. I think that looks really good. Okay, we're going to add some highlight on there. All of these elements should go pretty quickly because there's not a lot of super great detail that I'm adding. I'm basically base coating, adding a little bit of shading and then a pop of highlight to keep it um, pretty easy but fun and a quick project for you to do. Okay so now we're going to highlight with our white and uh, I really just want to create a dry brushy look here so I'm going to go to my smaller flat and see how this is going to work and load some of my white on here and 
dry brush through the center here. Just kind of dragging the brush down it through the center. Just creating that little bit of a shine. Because this is not, um, you know, anything that we have to really add tons of detail to. So that kind of has our anchor done right there, and that looks pretty good. You can go back over any areas that you feel need a little bit more of a bright highlight in it and add that but I think it looks pretty good okay so that finishes out the anchor we're gonna do the rope next and it's gonna take a little bit of shading and a little bit of highlighting like the other stuff okay let's work on the rope I'm using coffee bean my multi-surface color I am putting in my packet um, the conversion if you want to use Americana acrylic paints or fabric paints so you'll know every color that will convert to create this design with different paints. So we're going to side load and I'm going to see if this is going to be dark enough. I might have to add a little bit of black to this. I think it might work. Yeah, that's going to be fine. So we're going to bottle. I'm put some water out here on my palette. I want clean water. I don't want dirty water. So never go into your water basin when you're getting water for floating because if you get into your dirty water you create a cast shadow on your painting that you cannot get out. So I want these to be nice soft little floats of color. And this is just a knot that's tied around this. So when you do paint in your, your base coats, make sure you're painting in every little space all on its own. And then you can create um, the shadows where they need to go what's under what. This is how we give stuff depth. And we'll put this one under this and under this one. A little bit here where this one comes up against that one. On top here, I'm going to put a little bit of shading along that top edge so it's starting to look more like a knot. You just all right, so we're going to keep continuing going down to this rope just separating all of our little rope sections. I want to make sure that my outside edges are have a little bit of shading because that will give the rope the roundness you know of each section. So I'm, I'm doing it where one meets another and then the outside edges. So it's really just the center that doesn't get anything.
So this edge I want to be on top of this, so I'm not going to shade there, okay? I do need to go back up here and shade a little bit more right there. So I'm going to go under the one that's on top and then along the top and bottom edge. Then under, along the bottom and the top edge, leaving that one edge and the center unpainted. Under, grab a little bit more paint here, along the top and along the bottom edge. Under, top edge and bottom edge. That's just giving it the roundness that it needs. Super easy. This is definitely a beginner fabric project. You're loading just paint on one corner of your brush. You do have a little bit of water in your brush so that you can move that paint a little bit. You can also use some fabric medium, that would be fine. I'm going to shade along the edge here next to the anchor, but not on top of the anchor. Try that again. Okay, so back this way because this one is on top. So that one's mostly shaded. Okay, then this one is on top here. And then that one. So that's the shading on the rope. Super crazy easy. And then we're going to highlight. Okay, I am going to use the color mushroom. I didn't know if I would like it. I don't want anything bold and bright on here and so it's going to work out pretty well. So we're just going to put a little bit of highlight with this mushroom color. It's not white white, so it won't um, make our um, areas that we're going to be highlighting blend into the background. We'll keep them a little bit more on top. That's a little bit much there, so I'll just take some of that off with a damp brush. I'm just doing a little side load. Highlighting that one edge that we didn't shade. You could also come in if you want to make this more of a dirty looking um, rope, add some shading of some black on it here and there. Add some little strings coming off of it, but I really wanted to keep this more simple, um, easy. You know, I just I just wanted to paint some quick pillows up for my chairs outside. And this is the fastest way to do it. You can come back and add a second layer any place that you feel like that just really faded down in there too much or some place that you want it to pop a little bit more. just a little dry brushing like we did on the anchor. Okay, I think 
that looks pretty good. And you can go back in with your shading if you need to darken anything. I see an area right here on the red that I need to fix with a little bit of that red and black mix. I get my blacks kind of drying out here. A lot of black. This might be too dark. Right here. It's too big of a transitional gap there. I want to fill that in. I don't want to see any light red showing through here. Rope is done. We're going to move on to the starfish and finish the starfish up. All right, let's finish up our starfish. So I want to move my uh, cardboard here. Make sure I don't have any paint on my hands. I'm going to slide this one all the way over so they're all nice and tight. I'm going to fold the top. I'm going to push them down to the bottom corner and fold the top over and clip that. That's going to keep the fabric nice and tight at the bottom. Wide angle out. It's going to keep it nice and tight at the bottom because I have both of my cardboard pieces all the way over here and all the way down to this corner. Okay? Alright, then clipped up here to hold it in place. Alright, our starfish. We're going to shade our starfish with, um, we're going to use the muted gold. See if that will show up. If it doesn't show up, we'll mix a color. So we want to go along this edge. Nope, it's not going to show up. So let me get some brown sugar and put it out. I have some here, but I think it's dried up a little bit. So I'll put some fresh out here. We'll probably just go with brown sugar and omit the antique or the muted gold altogether. So let's see if the brown sugar is going to show up. And it's showing up a little bit. Still not as dark as I'd like, so I'm going to mix it with the coffee bean. So we're going to go an equal mix of brown sugar and coffee bean. I want the outside edge of this starfish. To look a little more dimensional. So I just load one color onto my brush, then go into the other color and mix them on that little corner of my brush. You can mix some up with a palette knife, but in most cases, you always tend to mix more than you actually need. Let's go along this arrow for a little bit of a shadow. And then this area right here will be pretty dark. And let's bring it all the way to the arrow. No gaps there. Okay, I'm going to do this edge. Turn this. I'm going to be widening that a little bit, I think. Give this a little bit more depth here. Go along this edge of this one. And I might do both edges of the top one up here. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to darken that and make it a little bit wider. So more paint on my brush. I want that to be a little wider. Now 
the starfish is the only thing that we'll probably add a little bit more detail to. this one here to smooth it out a little bit. Make sure I get the gap covered up. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Get the starfish up a little bit more form here. And I think I will do all of the areas here. going to help. Okay, so those are really the only edges that I want to um, shade on. I want to add some little dots on here. So the colors I'm going to use are the, um, well let's see if just the uh, brown sugar will show up on here. Just some little bumps on here. We should probably put our highlight on first because I think that's going to take a minute to dry. So I'm going to remove that. And let's add our highlight on here first. And we're going to use our white for that, our cotton ball color. And we're just going to kind of dry brush. You can use a bright yellow as well to highlight on this. I'm just trying to keep our color palette kind of minimal. Put a little bit in the middle there. wherever you feel like you need it. I just want a little bit of dry brushing highlight on there. Um, when my dots dry, I can always come back and repeat that highlight on there. But let's add some dots. So we're going to add our um, doo -doo -doo, brown sugar. And I'm just going to put dots just kind of, you know, wherever wherever. You know, a starfish is all bumpy and has all these little things on them. So this is brown sugar. And, you know, in the middle it seems like there's a lot more. We're going to add a couple more colors in here so we don't have to fill it all up with this color. Just get a few in there. And then we'll add some that darker brown, that cocoa bean. This is a really thick paint here. Just a few more. I might keep these a little bit more in the shadow area. Coffee bean. few in the center and then we'll add our white ones on there. And I might keep these more in the highlight area, but bring a few, scatter them throughout. A little bit too much paint and water on my brush, so just wipe off when you've got too much paint or too much water and reload. You don't always have to wash your brush, so don't feel like that is what you have to do. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. 
All right, and you can darken anywhere that you feel like you need extra darkness. Let's wide angle out. So we got our starfish done. You can shade underneath all of this and just, uh, you know, if you want, I'm not going to do that. Normally I do that, but I want this to stay just more playful and fun. So now we're going to stencil in our words. So I'm going to center my cardboard up here. Make sure there's no paint on my hands. No paint. Find my stencil here. All right, this is looking pretty cute. I am loving it. You do not have to add a stencil onto this. This is a stencil that I created specifically for this design. It says sea, sand, and sunshine. Now I've put masking tape all the way around mine. I like to do that because as I'm stenciling, um, I like for my stencil to stay in place. And it also helps me keep from getting paint out past the edge and having that line mark. You can also use a post-it note or a piece of paper to put against it as you paint. But this is the easiest way for me. So you do what um, works best for you. I'm going to make sure my boards are clear at the top. And I'm going to try and center this as best I can. Kind of eyeball it there. Make sure it's straight. But that's the that's the tough thing, <laughs> making sure it's straight. Okay, let me get my cardboard back up to the top a little bit here. I'm fold my bottom down and clip it. I want that to stay nice and firm. Get up above it so I can see if I'm getting straight. That looks pretty straight. Okay, so I've got it taped down. We're just going to use some black paint. You can use any color that you've used within this design. And I blended black in with my red. I used a black liner or marker to do that part. So I'm going to use black paint and a stencil brush. And I'm going to load my stencil brush. My stencil brush is dry. I'm going to offload onto my paper towel because I just want a little bit of paint to start this out. I don't have any paint on my hands. I felt like I got black paint on it when I opened that bottle. That's when you're going to get the paint on your hands. And I'm just going to start in a very soft circular motion applying this. My brush is straight up and down so I kind of can control um, a little bit more of the pressure. My, my hand is back on the handle. I can control the pressure a little bit. This D is this is my old stencil I made. The new one has the D connected a little bit better. Um, but this way I don't put too much pressure or try and push it underneath the stencil. And this gets me a nice light first coat. And then I can come back with a second or a third coat as I need to. Okay, a nice light first coat. I'm going to load my brush again with some black paint. Offload a little bit of that onto a paper towel. And I'm going to come in here again and start applying paint. I still am back on the handle so that I don't give tons of pressure or force it anywhere that I don't want it. And anywhere that the stencil feels like it's moving, you can just do a tapping motion on there. And apply as many coats on here as you want. If you want it to look a little more um, aged, you could just do one coat and then do a hit and miss on the second coat so that it doesn't um, fill in everywhere the same. You know, it'll look faded and kind of worn out.
I like to start out here on the stencil somewhere so I'm not putting a bunch of paint down on the open area which might cause it to bleed underneath the stencil a little bit. paint out. And hopefully we won't have any bleed unders as I've not ever used this paint with stenciling before so I have my fingers crossed for good things. <laughs> tiny amounts of paint on my brush here. I don't want a ton of paint. Okay. I think that's going to be okay, I hope. Alright, make sure I don't have any paint on my hands anywhere as I peel this stencil off. I do have a little bit of paint there. Grab a baby wipe so I can get it off. Keep baby wipes in your painting stash because let me take a peek. I got a little bit of bleed under up there and a little bit on the D. I knew I would on the D because it kept moving. But it's still super crazy cute. I love it so much. Get that brush out of the way, all this paint stuff out of the way so I don't accidentally put my fabric in paint. Okay, and there we go. Sea, sand, and sunshine. How fun is that? I love it. Even those places that are messed up makes the lettering look old and kind of worn, and I love that. So I'm not sad about that at all. It is gorgeous. I thoroughly loved it. So just let it dry completely. Put your pillow form in there and you are ready to go. Oh, I hope you guys have loved doing this one. Such a fun project for me. And I will see you guys on the next one. Give me a thumbs up, like, share, and comment. I appreciate you all so incredibly much. We'll see you on the next one, everybody. Bye-bye.